Okay, so I'm just going to explain the convolution equation and use some figures to help with the explanation. Let's consider an impulse response of a system uh, which looks like this. And this is, for example, uh, a system where when it gets an impulse at time equals zero, it responds, maybe the voltage goes up, and then the voltage gradually dies away back to zero. Uh, so you might think of many sort of systems that might have this kind of a response. So let's think about what's going to happen at the output of that system uh, if we have more than one impulse. So let's say we have an, impulse, an input to that system, uh, which is a signal, and let's just consider this one for now. Let's consider one where there's an impulse at time equals zero, so there's a delta function at time equals zero, and let's just say there's going to be three delta functions. Let's say you hit it with an impulse at time equals one and hit it with another impulse at time equals two. So there's three impulses, um, maybe flicking a switch on and off very quickly for an electric circuit once, twice and three times, and each time you switch it on and off very quickly, uh, the system responds by uh, increasing the output voltage and then dying away. Okay, so what's going to happen when you hit it with three, one after the other? Okay, well, I think intuitively you would understand that if it's a linear system, then you can look at the three different responses and they're going to add up in a linear way. So let's think about a few things before we draw the output here. Uh, let me make the point that this value here is h, that height there is h of 0. Okay, let me make another point that this is a function and I can draw, plot it with, with respect to anything as long as I am consistent. And so this is h of alpha plotted with respect to alpha as well as it was h of t plotted with respect to t. You can change the variable that you plot against, no problem. And the reason I'm going to do that is hopefully to uh, show you that it's uh, going to avoid confusion later. Okay, but hopefully you can see just by changing the variable doesn't change the shape of the function. Okay, so let's now, and, and also the height of this is x of 0. The height of this one here is x of 1. I've drawn them all the same height, but they could be different heights in different examples. But I'm, I've drawn them the same height just for uh, simplicity of drawing. But I'll also point out that that height is x, the value of x at time 0. This is the value of x at time 1. And this is the value of x at time 2. Okay, so in this system here, this impulse response is going to cause the system to jump up to x naught times h naught and then start dying down. Okay, so this is um, because if you hit it with an impulse of height x naught, it's going to be multiplied by the impulse response height and then it's going to die down. Okay, so that value there is x naught h naught. Okay, and then at time one, there's going to be another one uh, also, and then dying down. And at time two, the same, dying down. Okay, so this is one, two, zero, and we make the point that this is x of one times h zero. Okay, that's that height there. And this height here is, this height here is x of two, this is that height times h of 0. Okay, and these are all times h of 0 because that's the initial part of the response that's responding to each of these impulses. Okay, so overall, I can draw the overall waveform here, uh, is going to be the addition of these three. So I might just draw that here uh, out here for you. So this is going to be responding like this. Uh, because that's the only signal we're adding there. Then we're adding these two signals are being added. And so it's going up and then decreasing um, as we're adding those two signals all the way between there. And then we get another one here. We're adding all these three and then it's going to die down the addition of these three. Okay, so what about the convolution equation? Well, let's look at a, a particular time here. We're going to pick this time here, just as an example, and you can see that we're asking ourselves, what is this height here? What is this height here? Well, it's the addition of these three values. So let's write down what those three values are. So this one here, 
this first one here, that height there. Well, what's that height? Well, that height is this height decayed over that time difference, over that, that distance there, that time there. Okay, this is time t, uh, the time t we're picking. Uh, and so what's that distance? That distance is t minus 2. That's that distance there. Okay, so the height here is x2. The height here was x2 times h0, but the time here is x2 times the decayed h. So we go along here by a distance of t minus 2. So that's h t minus 2. Hopefully you can see that. So that was x2 times h0, but it's decayed by the time it gets up to here. Okay, and, we can, and it's over that distance there. Okay, what's that distance? We look up here, that distance on this h of alpha plot with alpha, that distance there, if that distance there is this distance here, t minus 2, that's that height that it's decayed to. Okay, now what's this height here? This height here is coming from over here. So this height here is x1 times the decayed version of h, So th because that height there is, is determining how high from that impulse uh, times h0, but now it's decaying the h. Okay, so this one here is x1, we can see, because that's x1, decayed by the amount that h has decayed over that time period there. That's t minus 1, that distance there, because this distance t is distance 1, so that distance there is t minus 1. So that's h t minus 1. And this distance here, the third one, well, that's there's still the residue that's coming out of the system from the impulse that happened now a long time ago at 0. Okay, and that's x0 times this decayed distance over here, which is t minus 0, which of course is t. Okay, and we know that this here, because it's linear, this distance is the addition of all those three. So it's this plus this plus this. Okay, and this is where we're starting to see the convolution equation emerging. Um, let's pick another time. Um, we might pick a, a time, a, a generic time tor. Let's say tor. And let's say that there was another delta function at a generic time tor. So it's not at 0, 1 or 2, it's just at a generic time tor. So we'll add in another one and we'll see what's going to happen to our output equation here for that tor. And we can write it down generically for tor. So if it if there's another delta function here, the height of that is, of course, x of tor. So now we'd be adding in here another decaying function, and that decaying function there would have a height of x of tor times h of t minus tor. Okay, that distance there, the amount that it has decayed, would be over that time delay here, t minus tor. Okay, so this is the generic one. Okay, now we think of what's going to happen for a generic input. This input here was these four delta functions, but let's say we had a continuous waveform as our input signal into this system. So the continuous waveform, we can think of that as an infinite number of these delta functions all next to each other, infinitely close together. So then this summation, which in this case is a discrete summation because we had four individual delta functions and we added them up as four, but if we had an infinite number of delta functions, all infinitely close together, which makes our continuous input, then this discrete sum would become a continuous sum. And a continuous sum is an integral. So we would have an integral from minus infinity to infinity, because we'd be doing all of the delta functions, which are infinitely packed together to make our continuous signal. So it's an infinite integral, which is adding up the signal here for our generic delta function, so for our generic delta function with this last one, x of tor, h of t minus tor, and you're adding them up for all values of tor, for all of the, all of the delta functions that we've put infinitely close together. And this makes our continuous signal. So here we have what we call the convolution equation. Okay, now for many people, particularly many engineers, uh, we look at this equation and we see mathematics, um, but I really encourage you when you look at this equation to see these functions and to think about what is really happening is you've got the result of an impulse into your system at all these times in the past and the, 
the residual that still exists at the time that you're interested in, you have to sum them all up. And those are residuals from things that happened in the past. So it's t minus tor. And you're summing them up. And it's an infinite integral because a continuous waveform can be thought of in mathematics as an infinite number of delta functions all next to each other, all infinitely close to each other. And so this is the convolution equation.